Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. As more and more cameras now released with video features like 10 bit 422, just like the A7 IV, more and more people are realizing that when they try to import their footage into DaVinci Resolve, it just shows up as an audio file. It's basically because DaVinci Resolve doesn't support the H.265 10-bit 422, which is a feature Blackmagic wants to keep for the paid version, which is DaVinci Studio. And let's be honest, if you're a working professional who has color grading jobs, then the price for the studio is just a small investment for you. But what about us, hobby enthusiasts? Do we have to fall back to 8-bit? Which would be quite unfortunate. That's one of the reasons I got the a 4 is the upgrade in video. So... Luckily, there is a solution and it's coming in a form of an old, old software. It's been forgotten and it's, to be honest, nearly too old to be Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend. It was originally developed for Windows 95, so you can imagine. In order to get this free software, just head to virtual.2.com and click on Downloads and Documentation, which will land you here on SourceForge. Now just click the files and click on the green button to download the latest version. So as you can see, it only downloads the zip file, which is a good thing because you don't need to install anything. So if you're not admin on a computer, you can still use it. And it doesn't install any malware, which some of the other converters might do. And there are no flashy pop-ups and advertisements. So it's a very clean, very simple software. So if you open the uh, application, then you will see it's a very basic interface. Technically, just the minimalistic tools you need, it does the job. So just click File, Open Video File and select the file you want to open, or just drag and drop it into the app, which way you prefer. Now, if you are running into an error, that could be because you don't have an H.265 codec installed on your computer. Most of the recent computers are all have it. They're coming from manufacturers or, or just the Windows update puts it on. But in the unlikely event you don't have it, uh, you have to get it from the Microsoft Store. Now, if you go to the Windows Store, you will see that the H.265 codec is not free, which is a shame. Microsoft should make it free, available to everyone. But there is a way, a little backdoor, to get it free. All you have to do is just click this link, which is a direct link to the Windows Store free version, which is going for the manufacturers, and it will just download and install the free version for you. Link is also in the description. So once the video is loaded, you will have these two video panels. If you don't have them, that could be because your resolution is too high for your screen. So all you have to do is just resize this panel, right click it and click 33%, let's say. So now you have these two panels, you can resize the other one as well. Basically it's one of the input and one is the output video. Simple as that. You can already start a conversion now, but if you want to trim your videos a little bit, then just use these two buttons. One is the mark in and one is the mark out. Just mark the start, mark the end and simple as that. So once you've done, uh, the first step you have to do is go in video and select compression. Now under the compression tab, uh, you have two options you can go with. One is GoPro Cineform or the other one is ProRes. Now I'm using ProRes because the settings are just easier. Basically I just use the default ones and that's good enough. So just do that. Just click OK. And in the audio, just make sure that direct stream copy is selected because you don't want to recompress your audio. So once it's done, just go back to the file menu, select save video, or you can just press F7 if you prefer that way. And here you go, this window will come up. Uh, here you can see the codec you have chosen is here. And you can also change it if you change your mind and you want to go with GoPro Cineform, for example. But this means that if you want to skip some steps, then once the video loaded, just press F7 straight away and it will land you here and just select the codec on this window. The next thing you have to set is the file type. So this one, save as type and choose the QuickTime MOV format. I found that one to be the best. It's a bit faster than MP4 and I think in quality wise as well, it's a little better. It's just, matter of preference. So once you selected the file format, 
then you have two options. If you're only doing one video, just click do now and save and the conversion begins. But if you want to do more than one video, you might want to batch process them. So instead of selecting do now, just select the add to job queue and press save. So once you press the save button, this way it just lands in the job queue so it doesn't start the conversion. So again, just go to file and select job control or press F4 and that will land you here on the virtual dub job control window. You can see your first video is there already, so it's already added. And if you want to add more, just in this window, so in the job control window, select file and then select batch wizard. That will land you on this window where you can see you can add more files. If you click select files, just open them. Or again, you can just drag and drop those files if it's easier for you. And you have options here up to select the output folder. So you want it next to your original video or you want it in a specific folder. It's all up to you. If you added all the files, just click add to queue and select the first option. You can see that it has the format you set for your first video. So that's why it's quite important to set everything properly for that video because all the others will be added with the same settings. So just select this and then you can see they all landed in the job control. So the last thing you have to do is just press start and the conversion begins. It's that easy. So now you just have to wait until we are to add up all all the files and your DaVinci Resolve compatible format. So basically, as you can see, it's a very easy method and, and well, it's completely free. So you don't have to pay. And as I say, this application doesn't even need to be installed on your computer. And the advantage as well that these files, well, they're going to be much bigger, but that means less compressed. So it's much easier and smoother to edit them. So basically the drawbacks of this is just you need time. As you can see, the conversion takes time and you need disk space because these files are much larger than the original ones. But if you're doing video editing, then you probably have a few terabytes in your computer anyway. So it shouldn't be a problem. So I hope you guys, this little tutorial help you to solve this problem if you run into this. And please share this video because I see many times people are asking the same question how to load files into DaVinci UI, only my audio is showing up and they probably just don't know that. It's a simple conversion and they can edit those files. So if you see someone asking that question, just send them here so they can have the solution as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe and all the things that usually Alice is saying, I have no idea, so whatever.